Hey, what's up, team? Eddie Gray, back in it. Hey, I hope you're well. In this video, we're covering Drum Machine Designer. If you don't know much about it, this is going to cover all the basics for you. So, let's get right into it. All right, so in order to find Drum Machine Designer, you actually can open it. You cannot open it from the dialog window here. All right, so if you go into track, you can't even find it in the menu bar. You actually have to create a software instrument track, okay? And you can also do that here, software instrument track. And then once you do that, you want to create an empty channel strip or really just any one of these. I'll just start with an empty channel strip. And then from there, you want to go to the instrument lane, click, navigate downwards, and eventually you'll find Drum Machine Designer nested right in between here. Okay, so we're going to click that. So why is it set up that way? What's the deal? Well, Drum Machine Designer is really just a collection of various plugins. One of them being uh, Ultra Beat, one of them being the new Drum Synth program and quick sampler. So it's basically an amalgam of different plugins inside of Logic. So here's the drum synth, and then again, a couple of other of these, okay? All right, so that being said, you'll notice that we have Drum Machine Designer up here, which lo it looks like a plugin, but it's, it's really not. This is just a GUI, right? And when we go to track number four, there's a track kind of nested inside, and it's already instantiated, which is interesting because this means that now in 10.5, we can actually instantiate a plugin. So this is new. Like, let's say you wanted to have battery inside one of the MIDI notes. So then this would be locked into C1. Does this make sense? So we're loading an entire instrument. In the past, of course, we knew we could load samples, and that is pretty simple. So you can see here, I have battery loaded on C1. So I'm going to open a battery. Let me just open up a quick kit here. And this could have been any plugin, by the way. It doesn't have to be drum oriented. So now what's interesting is I've got Drum Machine Designer open, and it's housing another program called Battery. So that's fascinating. What are some implications, some ways to think about this? Well, you can have various genre-based drum samplers, right? Construction kits that you start to build. So you can have, you know, uh, your kit here. You can have your piano sound here and so on and so forth. So that's one way to think about it. Now, I should probably say that in order to record this properly, uh, you're going to have to be in the appropriate lane. So let's say, for example, we went here and I loaded a, a rim shot. And then, so this is quick sampler, right? And then let's say I loaded another sample and here I loaded a hi-hat. Okay, so C1 is... Battery. Uh, C sharp is the sample I loaded here, and then D is the hi hat. Okay, but what if I wanted to just record everything inside a battery? Well, I believe if you hover and select the track, in this case, track number four, now I'm able to play everything that is inside of this drum sampler. Does that make sense? So if I'm highlighting track number three, I'm now using Drum Machine Designer in essence, and C1 will trigger battery, just the one kick that's triggering inside of here. But as soon as I go into C sharp one, even though my intention is to play battery, you can see that I'm triggering inside a Drum Machine Designer. So just be aware of that, okay? Because I can use the instrument here, and if I want, I can isolate 
the instrument here in such a way where I can play the note higher and higher like a like a sampler. So check this out. I'm going to play uh, going up the, uh, the keyboard. So that's great if you want to write some hi-hats, right? For example, you want to do like some triplets or something. Here, let me show you no repeat. Uh, something like this. Maybe we'll go. So that's really great, great workflow. I love that you can play in the track itself, and I love that you can play everything up here as well, or trigger it rather. Okay, so that is a very long-winded way of explaining something, but I do feel it's worth your time, especially if you're looking to be more efficient building your own construction kits. Okay, so inside of the interface, let's go ahead and select a drum kit. So forget about customizing this, but let's just select something that's already pre-made. It'll look something like this, right? Um, so this is pretty basic. Um, you know, if you hit every single cell, you can listen to it just like this. You can also trigger it via MIDI. You can mute everything, right? You can change the inputs and the outputs if need be. Looks like there's some activity that you can use here. If you click on the action item menu or the gear menu, right? There's various things you can do. Looks like you can resample a pad if you wanted to. What does that mean? Well, let's say um, I wanted to take this snare and I want to basically burn it and use another one. Well, I'm not sure where it's going to place it. I'm pretty sure it'll be somewhere over here. Resampled pad right up here. Maybe you want to change the pitch of that and you want to have two different snares, one on E3 and then one here, right? Um, so you got the ability to resample, which is nice. Uh, let's see, you can assign a track icon. You can clear the pad itself if you wanted to. Um, what else can we do here? Uh, let me click on... All right, so once we click on this specific snare you can see we have the, the quick sampler right which is where you're getting the snare sample from what's interesting is if i click up here now i get more information right this is kind of the the smart controls equivalent if i hit b you can see that the controls are in the interface so what is available here what what are what, what exactly are we looking at well you can see that everything is connected to all the plugins that are instantiated here. So let me go ahead and turn everything on. Otherwise, nothing's going to work. You notice that there's a connection there. And by the way, all of this can be mapped. Um, you can do all of this yourself. This is not outside the scope of the imagination. Let's say you really wanted to start working on this kind of thing. If you go into Smart Controls B, open up the inspector, there's an entire world of information that we can get into at a later date, but just wanted to give you the heads up. You can map everything, turn things on, turn things off. It's really great. Okay, so you'll notice that if I open up the EQ, all right, and then I use the smart controls. Now, this could, these can be MIDI mapped as well. So if you have knobs or sliders and you want to go ahead and connect them, you absolutely can by hitting uh, Command L and just make sure you select the controller and then go ahead and move your MIDI CC. That being said, if I turn this knob, you can see that that's connected to the low filter. Same bit here, high cut filter, right? So what exactly happens when, for example, uh, I turn high tone or drive, right? These are things that you would have to investigate a little bit further, but obviously for something like compression, you're going to get something that's being MIDI mapped. So you see that the threshold is being pushed back. So these are all presets that have been pre-configured in order to serve you so that you can go ahead and make the best music possible and not have to be technical, right?
you have the ability to make music and you have the ability to be technical. And, and some of these things can be learned. Some of these are, are given to you. You're born with them. But either way, it's good to have both of them at your disposal, right? You have to have some technical understanding. And of course, you have to be in touch with your gift. Other things about drum machine design are worth noting. Um, again, up here you have a global gear menu and it looks like you can, let's see, close the library if you want to. It's interesting that they would give that option. Um, you can reorder the pads, change sounds, visual only. So this would basically mean like if I move, let me see. Okay. If I like move this over here, it's going to change the order in which it's played. In other words, if it was on F1 before, now the order changes. For example, I'm going to hit F sharp one, right? And I'm going to move this one and you'll see that F sharp one is now the click because they're all mapped to a certain MIDI note. So if you change this to visual only, if I hit that click, it doesn't matter where I move it, it's always going to be that click. So I personally like that behavior better, but I will leave that up to you. Let's see what else. Uh, sort pads by Dream. Uh, no. So this is an old standard that they used to have. If you want to go ahead and try that out, you can, or you can just sort them out chromatically. That's pretty cool. Kind of, um, yeah, so if you've kind of moved everything around, it uh, reorders everything. Let me see. Let me try this again. Sort pads chromatically. Yeah. So just a quick way of cleaning up house, and you can clear all pads here. All right. Inside of each one of these pads, depending on what you have selected, you're usually going to find the quick sampler. And in the quick sampler, you have the classic, the one shot, the slice and recorder mode. We, we went over this in the last module. So check that out if you haven't already, but drum machine designer is a really great way to stay on top of your game, uh, stay on top of your samples, really make sure that you have everything organized to the best of your ability. Worst case scenario, if you're not somebody that likes to do this kind of thing, it's not a bad idea just to start really getting to know the drum sets inside of Logic. I think they sound really, really good. But in order to take it to that next level, I do feel you have to use your own samples. And so if you want to start dragging in your own samples, you absolutely can. Let me go ahead and show you how you do that. I'll go to my favorite samples. Initial audio, best of the best. And let's say I just wanted to toss in a couple of kicks in here. You can do one by one. I'm going to go ahead and drag in a couple. You can see that it populates across the board. That's C sharp four. That's D, D sharp. All right, and let's say that was a little too loud for me, right? Well, I can go ahead and configure it down here, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be that loud. All right, so go into Q sampler details. Hey, that's too loud. You just drop the pitch of the pad itself. Here's the main screen. Okay. So to sum it up, you've got this incredible interface, which allows you to compile the best drum samples, instruments, loops, and you really have a couple main screens. You've got the cell pads here, kick controls here okay and if you want to scroll through all your various pads you can do that here and then you can go into pad controls and that gives you the individual controllers for the pad itself so we've got kick controls global it's going to give you things that are instantiated inside of your plugins effects reverbs things like that and then the pad controls unique to the pads themselves are going to give you effects specific to the pad, right? Things like pitch, moving left and right. Let's see what else we got. The pitch, pitch. Yeah. So that's pretty basic. I hope this video helped. Uh, I guess the last thing that I should actually mention is you can record MIDI the way that we're used to recording MIDI, right? 
But there's another thing you can do now is you can actually create a pattern regions. You don't, you no longer just have to record MIDI. If you want to create pattern regions, this makes it a little bit more calculated, right? So if you want to make music in a way where you don't have to think too much, this is probably the best way to do it in my opinion. So let's go ahead and trip on this. Here we go.